Hi everyone, today we'll be discussing how adding vinegar to 155 people's diets impacted their visceral fat volumes. So stay tuned to find out how they did it, the impact on their bodies, and how you can achieve the same results. Hi everyone, I'm Kat and welcome to my YouTube channel where health meets innovation and education. Join me in leveraging technology and education to promote universal health. So in our book club session number two for AMPK for Dr. Greger's How Not to Age book, if you've never seen it before, here it is. Welcome, welcome. So in that book club session, we discussed how increasing the intake of vinegar is one method of amplifying AMPK activation. And while I was making that video, I remembered a study mentioned in Dr. Greger's other book, How Not to Diet, that was simply too good not to share. So actually, originally, I considered recording myself drinking vinegar for 30 days for a video, but I recognized and I realized that that would actually be a very weak form of evidence. So if you haven't already, I will put a link below. Check out my podcast live stream episode with Simone, where we discuss the hierarchy of scientific proof. You don't have to. Welcome. You're welcome to do it. But long story short, Anecdotal evidence, for example, if I were to do it and share my story after drinking for 30 days and showing you my weight changes, my fat changes, that type of evidence is very weak. It's very weak when you compare it to me telling you about the 155 individuals who drank vinegar in a randomized, double-blind, and placebo-controlled trial. So that is why we're not going to do it myself. I'm going to tell you the research study that did it. So let's cut to the chase of how they did it, everyone. So in this research study, over 12 weeks, 155 individuals with high accumulation of visceral fat participated in a controlled experiment. These participants were divided into three groups, one drinking a placebo drink, meaning um, they still had to drink something to make sure that they had the approximately same amounts of volume, of volume intake. So they drank a placebo drink and then one drink uh, sorry, the one with placebo drink, they didn't have vinegar inside the drink. So they still drank something, but didn't contain vinegar. Second drink, uh, the second group drank a low dose vinegar, low dose diluted vinegar drink. And the third group had a higher dose of diluted vinegar drink. So they were also told to maintain their usual diet and exercise routines. On top of that, participants were asked to refrain from eating or drinking after 9 p.m. and fasted overnight for more than 12 hours. I'm just telling you all of this just in case you're interested in trying out yourself. Participants were also required to not exceed the equivalent of 25 milliliters of alcohol during the test period. And not that you should anyways. Well, I actually really don't drink alcohol on a daily basis. So anyways, moving on. <laughs> on top of the alcohol limitations, participants were told to avoid functional foods and drugs that are specifically meant for treating obesity and hyperlipidemia during the test period, just to make sure that there were no other confounding factors that were impacting, you know, fats and weights, right? You'll see why not. And then on top of that, I know so many limitations, but that's the power of these clinical trials. So the last one is that all patients were actually recorded their daily intake of energy, protein, fat, carbohydrates, cholesterol, fiber, and even steps. Okay, even steps walked. So all this information was gathered for data analytical purposes. So given the stage of what was recorded, what do you think happened? Pause the video, whatever, play some music. Do, 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 do. Okay, anyways, telling you. The results are in, and I'm so excited to tell you what happened if you don't know about it already. So those who drank vinegar showed significant reductions in visceral fat, subcutaneous fat, total fat, body weight, and BMI compared to the Dunn vinegar placebo group. I'll include a little graph here of, what, of the differences. And on top of those, in fact, those who drank more vinegar, the high dose vinegar dilution had statistically significant lower body weight and BMI values. So that's that's incredible. And okay, hold on. That's not it. That's not, there's more. And even beyond the measurements that I just mentioned, there were other improvements to the patient's health markers as well, specifically your serum triglyceride levels and your systolic blood pressure. And okay, take away the science talk, all of that means that the consumption of vinegar daily actually decreased the patient's risk for both heart disease and metabolic diseases. So, oh my God, like how, right? That's, 
as fat well actually you do know how if you've been reading these books right but let's kind of go back to the real let's talk about these findings really quickly because these findings are extraordinary because despite all of them having statistically similar like non-significant differences in their diets and physical activity levels across all groups only those consuming vinegar saw significant health improvements. So that suggests that vinegar's role in reducing visceral fat is independent, is occurring completely independently of other lifestyle factors. It's not that those who were, who were eating less or those who had different, they were consuming less fats in their diet, like all of those are controlled for. So but before we go on to more things, let's take a quick moment to understand the difference between the two types of fat that is impacted by this vinegar intake. There's visceral and subcutaneous fat. So visceral fat, I'm going to include a little picture here for visceral and one for subcutaneous. Visceral fat is kind of like, not kind of, visceral fat is the hidden fat. It's the fat that wraps around all of your internal organs, the heart, the liver, the kidneys. In fact, this fat isn't just sitting there. That fat is actually active. Okay, so I think Dr. Gurr mentions in, in his How Not to Age, mentions that it's actually becoming one of the largest organs in our bodies. Not the skin anymore, because we, have, we are accumulating so much fat. And in fact, this fat is releasing chemicals that can affect how our body works, and not in a good way, okay? Not in a good way. Fats are actually leading. The adipose tissues will actually secrete hormones, and it's increasing inflammation in our body. There's so many things that's actually going on, and too much of it can lead to health issues like heart disease and diabetes. So that's visceral fat is scary, guys. That's okay. I'm not going to go into that tangent right now. On the other hand, we do have subcutaneous fat, and as the name suggests, subcutaneous. So it's subcutaneous. It's, it's under your skin. So that's the fat you can pinch. You can physically you can physically pinch, <laughs> pinch on your skin. Um, it's more invisible and it actually acts like a cushion, okay? So while we do have, we all have subcutaneous fat, so too much of it isn't really great for our appearance, but it's generally less harmful for our health compared to visceral fats. So in a nutshell, visceral fat is the sneaky internal fat that can actually cause health problems, while subcutaneous fat is the fat that you can see and feel and it's mainly there for protection. So as you can suspect, it's very essential for you to keep an eye out for your visceral fat and for all of, well, I guess, our visceral fat and our collective health. So that is why it was such a breakthrough for in nutritional science to identify that even the simple dietary addition of in vinegar can impact your visceral fat and your health. So all of that science and studies aside, how can this benefit you? Right? How can you benefit from this? Well, lucky for us, vinegar is pretty common and accessible around the world. Vinegar is a common kitchen staple and you can easily find it in most grocery stores. And here are some common types of vinegar you might encounter. I think the most common one you might see is apple cider vinegar photo. Uh, apple cider vinegar, known, usually known for its slightly sweet and fruity flavors. Apple cider vinegar is a popular choice. I recommend going for unfiltered, the one that has still kind of stuff on the bottom. The organic version is unfiltered for the most potential health benefits. Number two, you might have seen a white vinegar. So white vinegar, it's usually sold for pickling and for cl cleaning purposes. You might see them in very large containers. I see them at Costco all the time. Um, they're, it's a very large acidic taste. It's just the most basic of white vinegars. <laughs> Number three, there's balsamic vinegar. I should go grab mine. Uh, balsamic vinegar, it's usually richer, darker color and it's sweet, complex flavors. And you might see them pretty often in salads or glazes or, or if you go to like an Italian restaurant, they have a the little balsamic dipping so that you can flavor your bread as well. Number four, you might have seen red wine vinegar, red made from red wine. I use it for cooking, for my risottos, for my pastas. It has a robust, tangy taste and making it perfect for salad dressings again and for actually marinades. And number five, rice vinegar. I'm sorry, I really like cooking. I really love food, so. But number five, there's rice vinegar. So we commonly use it in Asian cuisine for, for sushi, for cooking, for, for sauces, for my cold noodles, for my liangmi. I actually add a lot of rice vinegar. It has a mild, slightly sweet flavor, and it's great for sushi rice and dressings, dressing up your your your, your cucumbers. I, I use your cucumbers. <laughs> and number six, last but not least, a group actually of fruit vinegars. So you might see in my next video actually. Fruit vinegars are usually just made from wide range of fruits. For example, um, I love uh, for Asian, uh, I'll, let me see if I can find videos. There are plum vinegar, strawberry vinegar, peaches, pomegranates. I have peach vinegar for my salads and each fruit flavor. It actually just 
it gives it flavor. It gives it the fruit flavor and a distinct aroma to the vinegar. So I really like it. There's a lot of natural sweetness and it's not uh, it's not artificial sweeteners and it seems like it seems like it's a healthier alternative to some commercial dressings and condiments. So these are great for salad dressings, marinades, glazes and even desserts. And now that I've given you such a large overview of different types of vinegars, I want to talk about how can you incorporate vinegar into your daily meals or how I do it. So I definitely do all four. I'm, I'm a vinegar, I'm a little vinegar slut. I love vinegar. So moving on. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right, so four types of way you can incorporate vinegar into your daily meals. Number one, most commonly you might think of is salad dressings. Okay, so one of the easiest ways and most important ways to enjoy vinegar is to use it as a base for your salad dressings. So what I do is I mix it with olive oil, herbs, your favorite seasonings, and just mix it all up and emulsify it into one dressing that you can put on your salads. And I actually really recommend doing that because a lot of times people think that it's not good to use vinegar or not or you shouldn't use too much oils or fats but you actually do need some healthy fats in order for your body to actually actively absorb your fat uh oh gosh your your liquid your lipid soluble nutrients right so you actually do want some fats in your diet it's not exactly healthy for you to completely reject fats in your diet okay and number two marinades 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 i love marinades i love marinades because i used to love korean barbecue i love making my tofu and vegetables and so many different flavors that we can impart to food right so Vinegar as an acid can tenderize your meats and veggies. It can break down the cell walls. It can break down different proteins to make it softer, to make it more flavorful, give it add some flavor. So I highly recommend trying to marinate your tofus, bell peppers, artichokes, corn, your fajitas, right? So many things you can do. Mix it in with some vinegar, oil, and spices before you grill or roast or, or bake or air fry. So many different ways. Number three, uh, I recommend pickling. I found pickling 2023, 2022? 2022. Recently, in recent years, I have really loved pickling. I've always known about kimchi and, and and pickled foods, but I've never been a fan of pickles. But this year, I started learning how to pickle vegetables like cucumbers, carrots, onions, onions, and a vinegar brine. And homemade pickles can be tasty and healthy. So I picked up a fabulous, ab absolutely fabulous, absolutely fabulous horseradish dill pickle when I was in Pennsylvania last fall and I am such a fan. Okay, so some other favorites, favorites of mine include a gardeniera, I believe that's how you pronounce it in Italian, and for my sandwiches and salads, and Chinese smashed cucumbers. Okay, you cannot beat that stuff. You get some little cucumbers, you get some garlic, a little bit of vinegar, sugar, and you just smash it all up and it's Next up, last but not least, probably also the easiest, is beverages, which is how they did it in the study. So some people like to dilute um, a small amount of vinegar in water and drink it as a health tonic. And just, I would say, start with a teaspoon or two in a glass of water and it just adjust it to your taste. And this is probably the most easiest method because you just add it to water, to the water you drink on a daily basis. So, but, 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 hold on, hold on, don't leave it. But before you rush off to grab that vinegar bottle of vinegar, let's talk about the dosage utilized, okay? In the study we discussed, the low dose group drank just 15 milliliters of vinegar, while the high dose group drank 30 milliliters. So that's roughly one and two tablespoons per day. So that's for the one and two tablespoons for the low and high dosage. So, so keep that in mind, get a spoon if you don't have one, measure it out because you don't actually need to drink an excess amount of vinegar in order for you to benefit from it. So keep that in mind. And in fact, these volumes of vinegar was diluted in 500 milliliters, 500 <laughs> milliliters of water. So it was approximately a 15 to 20 time dilution. So please, 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 do not drink the vinegar straight from the bottle, okay? Vinegar is acidic, and the acidity of it can actually be harmful for your, digest for your digestive tract, all the way down your esophagus, your stomach, everything. So dilution is key to ensure that it is gentle on your digestive system. So don't do things without learning how they work, please. So keep that in mind. And thank you, everyone, for joining me in this story of vinegar versus visceral fat, body weight, and overall health. So if you found this information valuable, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your own experience of the vinegar in the comments below, or even share this content with your loved ones. Cheers, everybody, to a healthier tomorrow, and I hope to see you around. Cheers, everybody. Bye, everyone.